So we'll continue from at tadrib with Thamin. Uh, just quick note, we are in chapter 27. The book has 30 chapters, okay? So after chapter 27, we have 28, 29, and 30, the cha chapter meaning the lesson 30, it's a muraja, which is a review. So that should be a, a little bit easy, I hope. So we will be trying to finish 27 today, inshallah. So at Tadrib with Thamin, the eighth exercise, it says, Ajib anil as'ilati taliya mustakhdiman ma bainal aqwas. The word mustakhdim you need to use. Istakhdama, the verb is istakhdama. Istakhdama yastakhdimu. So mustakhdiman meaning using ma baina aqwas. Aqwas is a plural of qaws. Qaws is this thing, you know, this parenthesis. So answer these questions using the words that is in between the parenthesis. That's what he's saying. So it should be fairly simple. It says, Min aina ishtarayta al kitab. Min aina ishtarayta al kitab. Okay, ishtara. We, I think we had this verb before. What does ishtara mean? Hmm? To buy. Where did you, remember the star, we talked about the star a lot. So where did you buy the book from, right? And then you answer it. It gives you the answer. Al maktaba. So you can say, if you want to say, I bought. How do you say I bought? You change the ta into tu. You say, ishtaraitu. Uh, ishtaraitu. Ishtaraitu al kitaba. Min, minal. You say, minal maktabati. Short answer would be just say minal maktabati. If somebody asks you, min ay nashtarayt al kitab, you say minal maktaba from the library. By the way, uh, this concept you might be a little bit confused why uh, they're using maktaba, like why you know we don't buy anything from maktaba from the library. But uh, this word maktaba is actually used in in the Arab countries like a stationery. You'll find it where they book, they sell books, you know, the pens, papers, things like that. You understand? So I'm, I'll just do a few of them, and then I think uh, you will understand this quite easy. Uh, then he says, Ain al kitab, where is the book? And it is, uh, they want you to answer using minbada. Who remembers what is minbada? There's another word for this, tawila. Table, uh, minbada is table. So it's asking, where is the book? You say, you say, ala al minbada. Or you can say, al kutubu ala al minbada. If you want to complete, as I give you a complete sentence. Uh, then he says, Min aina atasallamu, atasallamu al kutuba. From where do I receive the books? Okay. And they want you to say, Mustawda al kutub. Just simple, you say, Mi, Min Mustawda al kutub. Or you can say, uh, Depends. If, if they're asking you, Where do I get the books from? Right, then you want to say you get it from. How do you change it? Change this one. Atasallamu to tatasallam. Tatasallamu. Tatasallamu al kutuba min mustawda'il kutub. Fairly simple, guys, right? So I don't want to spend too much time. Uh, as you can see, these are quite fairly simple. Let me see if there's any word. Do you know what this word ja'a means? Hmm? Ja'a. Is to come. So mean aina jaat. Why do we have ta with the sukun? Because it's feminine. Where did fa Fatima ha come from? Okay. So you say jaat minal madrasa, the school. Clear? Inshallah, I think this is easy. Then we have at tadribu tasa. It says ghayir, ghayir to change, wa akil, change and complete. Uh, it says marhaban bik. Marhaban is welcome. Hadhi kutubul, it should be mawadi al muqarrara ti alayka. So these are the books of your course subjects for you. So mawad, you know, it's the plural of mawad, which is a subject. Muqarrara is a course. So course subject. So these are, they're using as an adjective the books of course subjects for you or uh, required of you. Uh, but the issue is, I don't know what they want me to do. Uh, they give us ahlan wa sahlan. It's exactly the same sentence as before. 
and then they gave they gave us al qira'a i have no idea i mean here's you can see al marhaban bika this thing you can change with ahlan wa sahlan you know you see someone or someone comes to you you can say marhaban or you can say ahlan you can say ahlan wa sahlan and believe it or not you can add all of them ahlan wa sahlan wa marhaban so i'm not sure if that's what they want and then it's asking about uh, i don't know what to do here maybe we can change saying marhaban bika hadhihi kutubul qira'a i don't know guys we'll skip them okay because i don't honestly i don't know uh, by the way do you know what qurrasa is which is a booklet right muhadatha we talked about conversation uh, madha is a subject we said jadwal what is jadwal jadwal is chart chart table things like that uh, jayid uh, so we have at tadribul ashir the 10th exercise akmil kalmisal complete like the example okay so we have done plenty of these exercises i don't think i we should go through all of them but i'll just quickly go through some of them so these are the past tense al fi'l al madi so darasa darasa means to study right how do you say i study is in the past tense darasa means he studied how do i say i studied darastu ahsanti darastu i'm not even going to write all of them because i think i've done them in quite a few times and it takes time so how do you say we studied darasna we studied darasta okay so this would be uh, darasta and then darasti okay darastuma both of them will be darastuma okay antum darastum antunna darastunna darastunna and then huwa darasa hiya darasat remember the ta with the sukun and always remember the huwa has the smallest form of the verb that's why the book usually see this is the huwa this is the smallest the third person singular is always the closest to the root word okay and then everything else just adds here huma has a little bit of issue in the past tense who knows how do we say huma day two studied hmm? and remember there's a difference uh, so we have mudakkar and muannas for the masculine how do we say hmm? we say dara sa this alif so how do you say huma for feminine is it the same thing dara sa hmm? i'm not sure if we did this i have a feeling we did this dara sa ta yes excellent so it is dara sa you need this ta dara sa ta okay and how do you say they studied so the plural is you add wow so you say dara su dara su the wow is the plural but then there's a convention that you need to add alif this alif comes as a convention otherwise it will be confused with uh, other things so because you know some verb some verb ends in wow so you know that wow you'll get confused is it a plural or not to remove this confusion if we add this alif darasu they study hunna darasna you see the sound is still there darasna darasna so the, what is the difference between this one darasna and darasna is this alif okay so your your pronunciation Uh, has to be clear otherwise uh, people will get confused jay yeah, so i i'm not going to be doing the other ones but doesn't mean guys that you should skip them now uh a, a quick note i don't know if we mentioned something or not uh which inshallah we will study them more so these are three letters as you can see these are three letters tarasa samia so they're in original form but sometimes we talked about what happens Uh, these are part of the morph sometimes what happens uh, the arabs add additional letters to those root words to give additional meaning this subject how what happens when you add additional letter is the subject of sarf morphology like for example qaddama and then from the qaddama we say taqaddama taqaddama the original root was qadima okay so you see what's happening so these are a little bit different for the verbs that they gave us nothing changed it doesn't matter if you have three letters four letters five letters it doesn't matter the theory is the same okay you will be adding exactly same thing because you're just adding at the end 
So, tasallamtu, tasallamta, tasallamna, tasallamu, sa'adtu, sa'adti, sa'adna. Okay, so all of these things will be same. Uh, make sure, please, do them. It's like, I, I just don't know what to say. And when you do them, also try to speak out. Like, uh, make your voice loud. Uh, practice them. Uh, so we have a tadrib al hadi ashar, so 11th exercise. So, this conjugation, the other conjugation was for the verbs they are giving you for the noun conjugations. Okay, and I'm telling you this in you know, they want to make sure that's why I like this book. This book one gives you all the foundations that you need as you move forward, they will not spend too much time with this kind of conjugations. So we've done this before uh, in this book. How do we conjugate positive? case like how do you say my yours are so these are pronoun conjugations we have done this before so they gave us example kitabi kitabuna okay kitabuka kitabuki kitabukuma you know this uh this whole thing we've done uh, another way you can you can learn when you study um grammar a little bit more they will teach you different types of pronoun so these pronouns that you see these are moon fossil they are separated pron pronoun Believe it or not, these pronouns, they only come in one situation as a subject. So that's what they also call subject pronouns. Even in English, you have the same word, you have subject pronoun, object pronouns. For example, I is a subject pronoun. You cannot say he saw I. You have to say object pronoun, which is me. And then you also have a same for the same pronoun. You have the positive pronoun. You, you cannot say me book. You have to say my book. You see what's happening? So you have the same pronoun has a different words or different pronouns for the different situation. In Arabic, it's the same thing. So these things are exclusive for the subject. Ana, nahnu, anta. So, and they're also moon fasila. And there's other times also comes with after illa, which is a little bit advanced. You will learn them later. And for all of them, you also should know what is the object pronoun and what is the positive pronoun. Main thing you should know that muttasila is, uh, for example, for ana is ya, okay, and uh, and for nahnu is nun uh, nun alif na, and anta is kaf with fata. You know you should know them, and you will see, you will be using the same pronoun. Right now I'm saying it loosely because in advanced grammar they will be a little bit more precise. But loosely, what I'm saying is that you will be using these short pronouns, the connected pronouns for the both positive and object. For right now, make sure you know all of them, guys. I think we have went through all of them. I just don't see what else to do other than asking you guys to complete. Let's do few from bite. How do we say your house? Do you say bite to what? Your, I have to emphasize what do I mean? So I meant the plural. Kum. Yeah, you're right. If you want to say your singular baituka, by to keep by to come yes now uh, maybe one more uh, how do we say their all feminine house huh? by to hunna yes uh, hunna now jade so i am not going to spend completing them i think i've done it even if i did spend one hour it has zero benefit for you guys especially if you know this conjugation and the conjugation is in front of you Okay, it's all in front of you. Only way it will help you, you, is if you do them yourself. Okay? Now, moving to the next exercise, we have at the Dribusani Ashar, the 12th exercise. Ask, then answer as in the example. So they give us an example. Uh, uh, so the Mithal, it should be Mithal. Mithal is Sayyara. And then you should be asking how hal hadi sayyara tuka is this uh, your car? Naam hadi sayyarati. Yes, this is my uh, my car. Then hal hadi sayyara tuka aida is it also your car? Then it says la hadi sayyara tu who. So you have uh, three different conjugations here. I think these are more for you to speak. Okay, so you, you do the same thing for uh, Hakiba. You say, Hal hadi Hakiba tuka. Then you say, Naam, hadi Hakibati. Then you say, Hal hadi Hakiba tuka, Aidan. 
Isela hadi hakiba to who. You can change the pronoun if you want. You can say la hadi hakiba to ha. Okay, so uh, hakada. It's very simple, guys, right? I think it's very simple. Then we have at Tadrib Thalithu Ashar, the 13th exercise. It says, Iqra wa lahid at Taghira fi kulli jumlatin mima yati. It should be sukun here. Yati. Okay, it says, Iqra means read and lahid. Lahada yulahidu is to note, notice, notice. You pay attention to something. Notice the Notice the change. Fi kulli in every sentence uh, which is coming. So let's see what he's saying. Hal hada huwa talibu alladhi yadrusu fi al-mahad. Okay, so the, this exercise has a little bit things. Uh, a lot of these issues we already talked about. Even in the last last lesson, we talked about uh, this issue with why do we say hada huwa talib. We talked about this thing, right? What they're trying to show you here, the pronoun is huwa. First of all, let's translate what he's saying. Hal hada huwa talib alladhi yadrusu fil mahad. So the question is, is this the student who studies in the institution? It looks like, you know, the could be a bit redundant, right? Because you could have said, hal hada talib alladhi yadrusu fil mahad. Then what is the translation? Is this student who studies in the mahat? If you don't have hua, it would be a phrase. But if you have the hua, then it would be a sentence. Is this the student who uh, studies in the mahat? What's happening, as you can see, this pronoun is changing few things. This pronoun is forcing you. Look, this uh, is a little bit interesting, actually. This huwa is connected with hada and is also connected with alladhi. So both this huwa is, this is dhamir, this pronoun is connected to the demonstrative pronoun and is also connected to the relative pronoun, ismul ishara and ismul mausu. So for example, if you are to change here, then you have to change the whole thing. It's a simple thing you want to say, but uh, there's a lot of changes that needs to happen in order to get it right. So now you're saying here, so you say, Hal hadihi hiya talibatu allati. Even the verb changes. You cannot say yadrusu anymore. Or you have to say tadrusu. Remember, yadrusu is for he. Tadrusu has two meanings, she or you, masculine. So the point, I think the point is uh, that you have to be very careful. So if you're not used to it, it's very difficult to get all of them right. And especially Huma, uh, look what's happening. Hal hadani Huma al-talibani al-ladhani yadrusani. If you can get comfortable with something like that, and that's what the book wants right now, you're you're good, because it's not easy. There's a lot of things you have to know. Even if you don't know, I think the book gave you pretty much all the important ones, so you can just uh, you can just learn from this exercise. You have these pronouns and learn their, their demonstrative pronouns. So you can put them in a chart. Hada is for masculine singular, right? Hadihi is for feminine singular. Hadani is for masculine dual. And hatani is for dual feminine. Talibatani. And then uh, for the plural, uh, it gets easier because it's uh, it's same for the masculine and feminine. So haulai. Haulai is the same. Okay, so now going to going to the Ismul Mausul, the relative pronoun you have Alladhi Alladhi, which we have talked about a lot. Then for the dual is Alladhani Allatani. Alladhani for masculine, Allatani is for feminine. And Alladhi now, of course, you know those in the plural, and Allati Allati is for the feminine plural. So as you can see, the demonstrative pronouns are the same, but the relative pronouns are not the same. So somehow, it's almost like you we have a chart, as you can see. So we have the chart, but if you still want to put them in a nice table, uh, you can do so. Jayit, uh, so we have at the Rabe Ashar, 14th exercise. It says, istakhdem. See, it's the same verb that we had before. He used the mustakhdem. Uh, this is the verb that I gave. Istakhdama, yastakhdimu. 
uh, is to use, and this is the command verb here, istakhdim. It should have been a sukun here. So why don't we have a sukun? Because of alif lam. Dhamail, dhamail is the plural of dhamir, uh, pronouns. Wa ghayir ma yalzamu, and change what is necessary. Okay, so I think it's related to the exercise that we've done before. Hal anta ladhi fa'alta hada. It says, hal anta ladhi. Are you are the one? So why are they using alladhi? Why can I say? Because we have many of them. We have alladhi, allati, allati, alladani, uh, alladina, all of these things. Because it goes with the pronoun. Anta is you, masculine. So you have to say alladhi. Fa'alta. You are you the one who did this? Hada. Hal anta alladhi fa'alta hada. Are you the one who did this? But now. Uh, he wants you to change with ana. So you will say hal ana, which relative pronoun do you use? Alladhi. Yes, yeah, so uh, you know what? This is a tricky one uh, because it depends on who's speaking. Ana can be masculine, ana could be feminine. If I say, I will say hal ana alladhi fa'altu hadha. Okay? But if you are feminine speaking it, she has to change it, saying "Hal ana lati faaltu hada." Okay. Nahnu alladina, anti alati. All of them are same. So you know, so for antum is going to be alladina. Huwa will be alladi. Here will be alati. Huma will alladani. Mons alatani. And then you whom will be will be alladina. Huna will be alati. And then for all of them, you will have to change the verb. So fa'alna, for this will be fa'alna, fa'alti, fa'ala, fa'alata, fa'altum, fa'alu. In hakada, you know, this is a very good exercise. I just don't know, even if I spend the time, how that will be beneficial. But it's something, don't skip them, guys. Don't skip them. Jayid, uh, so we have Tadribul uh, Khamis Ashar, the 15th exercise. It says, Iqra thumma aktub, Iqra thumma aktub kalimata. Al-Amida Makanaha. So read and then write the word Amida. The Deen. Uh, this Amid is the Deen. Amida, this is for feminine. Makanaha. In the place. Makan is the place. In the place of Ha. So basically, they will, they're asking you to replace the pronoun Ha with Amida. Uh, so it should be fairly simple. Ja'at Fatima tu li tata'allama al-lughat al-Arabiya. Fatima came li tata'allama. In order to learn, uh, the verb is ta'allama. Uh, ta'allama is to learn. And where does it come from? It's come from allama. It's come from allama. What, what does allama mean? Huh? Okay, before even I answer that, what, where does allama come from? From alima. Alima. What, what is alima mean? Hmm? Alima is to know. And when you add a shadda in the middle, it becomes a transitive. So you make someone else know it. Alima is to know. If it's an allama, that means you're making someone else know it. Which is what? It's teach. So you're teaching it. If you're making someone else to know it, you're teaching it. And then, then when you add the ta, which I explained before, then this thing becomes a reflexive. The teaching becomes reflexive. So that means you're teaching yourself. And so what does that mean? If you're teaching yourself, you're learning. You see how beautiful these things are. So Fatima came, Fatima came in order that she learns what Arabic language. Sa'alat Fatima tu. So Sa'ala, we had this one, Sa'ala is to ask. Sa'alat, she asked who? The Fatima asked an about maktabi amidati fismi talibat. So she asked about the uh, the office of the dean of the department of the female students. And it says, uh, ilaiha. And then she went to it. So I think that's what they mean here. In this kind of situation, we have a ha, we should be replacing with uh, al amida. So here you want to say, ila ilal amidati. So you just replace with ami. Simple. I mean, I think this exercise, because we would not say it like this, the whole point of the pronoun is to replace the noun 
So that what we have here is probably the correct version, but as an exercise, I think that's what uh, they want you to do. Because we would not keep on saying you will use pronouns. Now, uh, so here you will also replace it. So what is salama? What does salama mean in this context? When you say ala, it means to give salam. Salamat alayha. So she, they want you to train salamat alal amidati. So she gives salam, meaning saying assalamu alaikum, right? Wa qaddamat ilayha al awraq, and and she submitted uh, al awraq, which is the plural of waraqa. We had this one before also, which is papers. And believe it or not, this waraqa uh, is also the same thing as leaves in the tree leaves. Al awraq, it's as tree leaves. So and then she submitted to her the papers then qara'atil amidatu so this one as you know is sukun but the kasra is coming because of alif lam so the dean read al awraqa so she read the papers wa qabilat and qabila is to accept we had this uh, verb also before accept so she accepted who fatima if you read qabilat fatima to here with dhamma what's going to happen that fatima accepted so that's not what they're saying uh, because Fatima is a mansub here object so that means she meaning the dean accepted her Fatima to uh, shakaratha shakara is to thank shakarat because it's feminine ha goes to amid amida so i think they also want you to change here saying Fatima to shakarat al amida ta okay at that time it will be al amida ta وَسَلَّمَتْ عَلَيْهَا يعني عَلَى الْحَمِيدَةِ Give salam. ثُمَّ خَرَجَتْ خَرَجَ means to get out. مِنْ مَكْتَبِهَا أي مَكْتَبِ الْعَمِيدَةِ Okay, meaning uh, she get out from her office. Make sense, guys? Uh, then we have a tadribu sadis ashar, uh, the 16th exercise. It says, kawin jumalan kal misal, make sentences uh, as in the example. It says, kharajat fatima tu wa hadhi haqiba tuha. So they give you two words, fatima and haqiba. So they give us suad and uh, kitab. So we say, so what is feminine name, right? It's the same thing. Kharajat suadu. Do you say hadhi here? No, you say hadha. Kitabuha. Hada Kitabuha. Okay. Khulud. Khulud is male name or female name. Allah Mustan. I think a female name. Question. I think we talked about this. You know, the family name, proper name, will never take tanun. You know this, right? So it will be Suadu. Can I say Suadun? Khulud, assuming this is family name. Maryamu, Ihsanu, Hindu. Uh, Asma'u, Zainabu, all of them. So, Kharajat Khuludu wa Hada Thawbuha. And if it were masculine, you would say Wa Hada Thawbuhu. So, if it was masculine, you would say Kharaja. You don't add, uh, you don't add Ta. Uh, then we have At Tadribu Sabi Ashar, uh, 17th exercise. Ba Asilatan wa Ajwibatan Kalmithal Mustainan. So put, ba means to put a uh, question and answers. Uh, as in the example, musta'inan is to seeking help by taking help of bitadrib as previous exercise. So you kind of have to use previous exercise. Let's see what it says. It says as al-mithal, hal hadhi haqibatu Fatima? This is a mistake here. Anybody can find a mistake here. First question, what, what, what haraka goes here? Hmm? Dhamma, yes, single dhamma, because it's a positive. But what haraka goes here? This one is tricky. Uh, are you sure? Yes, it's a tricky. It should be kasra, but this word is mamnu minasar. This is uh, one of those words that doesn't take kasra. Okay, so here instead of kasra, what do we do? We have to put a fatha. 
So this Dhamma is absolutely a mistake. Uh, the father on the... Yes, uh, he, this is also a mistake. It's super far. So, yeah. So there's a lot of mistake in this book. But I think we talked about that if the words that doesn't take Tanwin, they cannot also take Kasra. So instead of in the place of Kasra, you put a Fatha. You know, that's the only rule you have to know. But this topic is quite... Uh, not I wouldn't say advanced. It's an intermediate topic. And when if the book talks about more in details, I'll go more in details. And then his answer is Naam Hadi Haki Batuha. Yes, this is a her, her bag. So I don't know. Let's just maybe do one, which is Swad and Kitab. Uh, so you say Hal Hada, Hal Hada, because the second one was what? Second one was Swad and Kitab. Uh, kitabu, what? Suada. Then you say Naam. Hada kita buha. Okay, yes, uh, this is hard book. I, I could do it, it's gonna help me. I tell you, uh, you know, I don't mind doing more exercise for myself, but it's not going to help you. It will help you only when you move your pen and your lips at the same time, inshallah. At Tadribu Thami Nashar, the 18th exercise is this Hiwar conversation. Said it says, Hal tasallamta kutubaka ya Muhammad. Remember, ya Muhammad. After ya, you cannot say Muhammad. Don't. Did you re receive your books, Muhammad? Muhammad says, Naam tasallamtu ha. Yes, I received them. <clears throat> ha is coming because broken plural. Mata, when? When did you receive them? Al yoma fi sabahi. So, why do we have a fatah here? It should be Dhamma, al yomu. Anybody know? We talked about this thing. I think I mentioned a few times. Zarf, excellent. So this is a Zarf Zaman. This is adverb of time. Anything adverb, it gets a fatha. Uh, this is also, they call it mafui fihi. Because you could have said fi. Fi, then if you say fi, you'd be fi liomi. In today. But you can remove fi. And when you do remove fi, you have to put a fatha. Okay, so this is not a mistake. Uh, remember also, al yom has a two meanings. It can be today. It could also be the day. Yom is day, Al Yom is the day. But in this context, we know this is he means today. Uh, why do you think it's going to be Mabni here? I don't see any reason it to be Mabni here at all. Hmm? It's just a thought. You understand? We talked about this one uh, before, right? Uh, when you say Asa Asalitha. Okay. Asa Asalitha. So if somebody asks you when you will come or something you can say fee you can say fee then what happens as saati as salisa three o'clock but once you remove fee then it becomes maful fee you have to put as saata as salisa so this become mansub not mabni why mansub because it's maful fee but once you say mabni you cannot say mansub majrul uh, because mabni means mabni is fixed and you cannot say state here, if you want to know Mabni, uh, since you asked, this is a Mabni. Here, you cannot say this is a Marfu, although you have a Dhamma. It, guys, by the way, this Munada is one of the difficult topics in, in Arabic grammar. So it has a lot of rules. So I'm not teaching you this thing. So don't, if you don't know it, you're in the right place. But uh, since you mentioned something, I just, I'll explain. Here, you cannot say this Muhammad is Marfu. No, it's a mistake because this word is Mabni. Even though it has a Dhamma, you cannot say smartful. It is Mabni. Uh, so that's what's happening here. Then it says, so it says, Kam kitaban tasallamta. Guys, if you don't know how to use Kam, uh, please go back. There's like at least three, four, five lessons we talked about Kam. You know, after Kam, we use singular and we use Mansub. Kam kitaban tasallamta. How many books did you receive? Tasallamtu asharata kutubin. I received 10 books wa mudhakkiratan wahida and uh, and one force note if he said asharata kutubin wa mudhakkiratan you know it would have been suffice but why did he add wahida because when you say you know mudhakkira it means one but why you are saying wahida is coming as an emphasis uh, then so I said wa min aina tasallamtaha okay where did you receive it from min mustawdal kutub 
from the book storage. هل تكلمت مع الموظفي في اللغة العربية? Did you speak? We had this verb before, right? تكلم. Uh, did you speak with موظف? Is the employee في اللغة العربية? Did you speak with him in Arabic language? He says نعم. Uh, then he says ماذا قلت له? What did you say to him? Uh, remember. I'm not going to go in details, but this verb is قال, right? قال, uh, I don't know if we did conjugation for this. This is he said. How do you say she said? You say قالت, which we learned. We just add a sukun with the ta. But how do you say you said? It should be قا. Uh, uh, I think I explained this one because what happens, I'm going to waste a lot of time explaining these things. What happens in, in here, we have a sukun here also. For example, if you add the haba, right? If you want to add ta with fatha, you say the habta. That's what I want to show you. See, you have a sukun here. Before the ta, you have a sukun. Yes? Is it clear? Before the ta, you have a sukun. So that means if you add this ta, before the ta, you should have a sukun. You have a sukun. But we have a problem. What? We have two sukuns. Ka alif has a sukun and lam has a sukun. So two sukuns in Arabic doesn't match. So what do you do? Uh, we have to remove the alif. So once you remove alif, then you have then you have qal. But then you know it it changes into <laughs> Allah al mustan didn't want it to go because then you will of course you will ask me then why do you have dhamma here? It should be kalta, right? Why do you have a dhamma here? Because it's not kalta, it's cool too. Anybody know? It's... I always say too much and get myself into trouble. Because the, the haraka that you remove, it looks like alif, but it wasn't alif. It's actually wow. It's because the qala, this alif is never part of the root. So what is alif? You look at the present tense, yakulu. Yakulu. So alif is actually what? Uh, wow. So since you remove the wow, so they put a, a dhamma here. Because wow and dhamma goes together. Allah must die. If you didn't understand anything, just memorize for now. Uh, that's why I shouldn't say too much stuff. Uh, what did you say to him? Uh, he says, Kultu lahu min fadlik uridu an atasallama al kutuba. Okay, I want to receive the books. Then he said, Wa mada sallamaka ghayr al kutub. What does sal sallama here mean? Sallama can only mean giving salam if it comes with ala. Do we have ala here? No. So salam would be to hand over, to give. What did he give you or submit to you? And he here means uh, the muadzaf, the employee. Ghair means other. Okay. Other than kutub, books. So what did he give you other than the books? Salamani, he gave me sharitatan. Remember, this sharita here, it means tape, but it, they mean the cassette tapes. Li mukhtabar, mukhtabar is lab. So that means uh, he is supposed to take this tape in, into the lab of a language so he can listen to them and practice for the listening exercise, right? Wa kurrasatan, you know, booklet. Li tadribat, for the exercises. Make sense? Now, uh, Saeed says, Ila aina dhaha tadhabu al-an. Where are you going now? When you say tadhabu, it can say, going you're going of course you can say you go believe it or not it also means you will go all three meanings uh, will make sense oh yeah this one will not make sense here because he's asking where uh where are you either you can say where are you going now or you can also say where will you go since you have an on maybe you can also cross out but the what i'm trying to say is in the beginning people teach you that in order for the verb to be future tense you need to add sin Yes, that's true. If you have a scene, then it's very crystal clear. But the context, for example, instead of Al-An, if he said, Ila aina tadhabu ghadan. Huh? What is ghadan means? Tomorrow. Then, uh, then it will mean you will go. It's in the future. Do you have to say satadhabu ghadan? No, you don't have to say it. Uh, yes, you can add sin and so far, but uh, that's not the case all the time. But since we have Al-An here, the best meaning is, where are you going now? Ila hujrati dirasati, insha'Allah. So he's going to in the study room. Wa aina maq'aduka fil hujra. Maq'ad is what? Seat. So where is your seat in the room? He says, 
is صف الثالث. صف is a row. It can be class. It has other meanings also. But he's saying in the third row, على اليمين at the right. وهل هل عرفت مدرس القراءة or did you know you know the reading teacher? He says نعم. وهل عرفك did he know you? Okay. Then he says نعم. قلت له اسمي. I told him uh, my name. وهل سألك من أين أنت? And did he ask you where are you from? Uh, then he says نعم. وقلت أنا من نيجيريا. I'm from Nigeria, right? وماذا قال لك أيضا? And what did he said to you also? He says قال أهلا بك ومرحبا. Okay. So he said welcome. Uh, then he says, "Hal turidu shay'an ya Muhammad? Do you want arada yuridu? Do you want shay'an anything?" He says, "La ya Sa'id, ashkuruka. La ashkuruka is thank you. It's also he could have said shukran lak, shukran laka. And what do you give as an answer? Afwan. Ana sa adhabu. See, he's using sa uh, sin here. When you say al an, even here it doesn't. It could also be future." Because Al-An would be like you are walking with him right now. Then it would be you are walking and talking at the same time, you know. But Al-An, if, if you're saying I'm going, you haven't gone anywhere yet. It's still future, right? So that's why even if you say Al-An, uh, he hasn't start walking, but it's still in the future. That means he will walk in the future. Another thing to note, I think I mentioned before, sin is for soon in very near future, basically. And you can say so far. Is for the far future. For this uh, modern standard Arabic, that's the rule that you need to know. The use seen is the near future. Sofa means uh, far future. So how would have you said in the sofa? You would have said ana sofa separate word. Sofa is not connected. Se separate word. Sofa adhabu. And obviously you cannot say al an at that time. Okay. Now and he says fi amanillah. Uh, in the safety and security of Allah. You know, this is expression we say. So uh, let me quickly go through this exercise. It says, Tadrib at-Tasi al-Ashar. So 19th exercise. Fahmul Masmu'. Just quickly see if there's any word. Uh, it's all of them. Uh, la Ahmadu Lam Yatasalam. I'm not going to explain this one, okay? Because uh, this will take a long time. Uh, I will see if this thing come again, then I'll explain. Here's a little bit grammatical issue is going on, right? So this will require explanation. Also, as well as likai. Remember, I said there are a set of uh, words that come before the present tense verb, which makes the present tense verb into mansu. We talked about an, and we also found out li. And I uh, explained to you how li is actually using an behind the scene. Another one is likai. When the likai comes, the meaning is in order that. The li and li kai, they have the same meaning. In order that, yadrusa, that he studies al lugat al arabiya fil mahad. Okay? Uh, see, even here, li kai yad and tat loba. From the context, it might have been ya. And also, li yad haba, the fatha. So, li just put this word into your list of the words that makes present tense verb into mansub. Now, so these are all uh, easy stuff. التدريب العشرون I think is the last one uh, it says تعبير شفوي uh, this is also speaking verbal exercise so we might have to skip let's see what it says تحدث عن تعليم اللغة العربية في بلدك مستعينا بما يلي so تحدث means speak converse about teaching Arabic language this is the masdar of علama علama is to teach and its verbal noun is ta'aleem. Okay, so that means teaching. Uh, talk about Arabic language teaching in your country. Musta'inan, seeking help, bima yali, with what's coming. Number one, al-lughatul arabiyyatu wa dinul islamiyyatu. You know, Arabic language and Islamic religion. So try to come up with sentence. Uh, like, for example, you can say something like al-lughatul arabiyyatu hiya lughatu dinil islami. Arabic language, it is a language of the Islamic religion, right? Which is true. Most of the text, uh, things that we do is in Arabic. I'll just quickly translate them and then we'll end. 
al ayatul lati tatakallama an lughatil qur'anil karim the verses which uh, speaks about tatakallama speaks about an about lughatil qur'an so there are a lot of verses in the quran that uh, talks about uh, arabic language they want you to go back to those verses and mention them ahadithu hawla lughatil arabiya ahadith is the plural of hadith uh, hadith what is hadith uh, here it means the prophetic uh, tradition sallallahu alaihi wasallam his statements and everything hawla hawla is around it's a good word to know around you can say hawla al bait around the home hawla al lughatil arabiya and also this one will always be mudaf mudaf ilayhi just like you say amam al baiti mudaf mudaf ilayhi front of the house uh, hawla is uh, has the same effect mata dakhalatil lughatul arabiyatu baladak when Arabic language entered your country. I don't know if we have to go back to your history if it did enter. So we probably can find something. Uh, then he says, Aina yata'allamu tullabu al-lughat al-arabiya. Where the students learn Arabic language. Then he gives a few options. Fi al-masjidi, fi al-madrasati, fi amakina ukhra, in other places. Amakin, uh, this is a mamnu min as so it cannot take a uh, kasra. It's not a mistake. It has the same form as masajid. Even the masajid, you cannot say, you cannot put kasra. So it has the same form. Uh, then he says, man, right? Not mean. Should be man. Mani ladhi, put a kasra here. Mani ladhi yu'allimu lughat al-arabiyyata fi baladik. Who is the one who teach Arabic language in your country? Uh, then he says, Hal ta'allam ta'lugat al-Arabiya fi baladik. Did you learn Arabic language in your country? And you know, he writes something about this thing. And alhamdulillah, we finish this chapter, uh, this lesson. From the next week, inshallah, we'll start a brand new lesson.